Well, it's late summer, we're in soybeans. Guess what we're scouting for? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not weeds anymore, Brian. We've got those under control. What's left is some insects that are getting out into the field. They're trying to attack our soybeans, and a lot of times this happens as the beans start to flower and as they get into full bloom, they seem to be ripe for the picking for bugs. Yeah, and you know the crazy thing is, just 10 years ago, we had barely ever sprayed our soybeans for insects. And now, we have literally sprayed 10 years in a row for soybean aphids and 10 years in a row for bean leaf beetles. I mean, I don't know exactly why this happened, well, but all I know is we're dealing with a lot of bugs now. I think it's a good thing, Brian, because I think that means our soybean crop is so good <laughs> that bugs can't resist it. They've got to come out here and attack You know, it. the funny thing though is in that 10 year span, we've taken our average yields from 40 up to real close to 60. Last year we averaged 62 bushel beans and that's even counting a couple fields that got flooded out. So, I mean, our yields have really gone up. That part's been great. But the important thing to make sure you're preserving Preserving yield in your field is spraying insecticides timely. Now we do use a seed treatment down. We're using something like Innovate or Acceleron, fantastic products. Okay, that's a great start and those will usually wipe out pretty much all your bean leaf beetles now. So we don't generally have to spray for bean leaf beetles anymore late in the season because we killed the early flush. But you know, you think about those seed treatments, how yep. much insecticide can you really put on the seed of a soybean? You know, it's, it's enough for early season control because you have a small plant and these insecticides actually move throughout the plant. Yeah, they're so as that plant's tiny, well, the concentration of insecticides is pretty good, but as those plants get big and bush out, there's just no way for that dose of insecticide to get all through that plant and be at a lethal dose in each leaf. Well, that's true, but you know what? Even if you've got that seed treatment out early, you're gonna have lower levels of aphids later on. So that could be good if you're kinda on the borderline of spraying or not spraying. Problem is, a lot of people think that borderline is 250 aphids per plant, and that's absolutely wrong. Do not listen to the people that are telling you 250 50 aphids per plant. Because you know what? When that aphid threshold came out, you know what the soybean price was? It was about six bucks or less. And insecticide treatment cost six dollars an acre. Well, now you can get insecticide full rate for two or three bucks. Okay, that's it. And the soybean price is double that six dollars that it was a few years ago. So there's no way that the threshold's the same because the economics have completely flipped in agriculture. Cost of treatment is down to next to nothing and the soybean price is worth a lot more. So I'm not saying go spray when you see any bug out there or go spray when you have no bugs out there. What we're telling you is the threshold is less than 250 aphids per plant. Okay, now there's a couple things that that brings up when we talk about length of residual control and also the speed of the knockdown. These are two things that farmers are very concerned about. Let's say you get out into a field, maybe you've been fishing for a week and you come back and you say, <gasps> Oh my goodness, I've got several thousand aphids per plant. Now, are you worried about the length of residual of control? Are you worried about how fast you can knock them off your yeah. plants? You're worried about speed of knockdown. And when it comes to speed of knockdown, still one of the older products brand, Lorsband, does a fantastic job knocking those bugs off quickly. Yep, but you know what? When we're spraying at our farm, when we have between 10 and probably 40 aphids per plant, somewhere in that kind of range. We're spraying early enough that I want lots of residual, and that's where the pyrethroids have a little bit longer residual. We're spraying full rate of a pyrethroid, so we have a little more residual. Okay, now what, what do you mean by long residual? Because we talk about some of these Good products point. and they say, well, we're gonna last 45 days. <laughs> well, there's no way any of these post-emerge insecticides is gonna last 45 days. Just forget about that, okay? That's a sales pitch, but it's a guarantee program too. Okay, so what they're saying is if you invested the money in the first place and if you have aphids that show up 40 days later, we'll pay for that. Well, think of it that way. Don't think of it that the residual is actually going to last that long. So make sure you're buying products that have some kind of respray program because it does happen. We've had to respray even on our own farm. You're going to have, even with the full rate of insecticide, two weeks of residual, that's it. All right. Now, the other thing when it comes to these products is if I get into the habit of using the same thing year after year. Now you mentioned pyrethroids and that's probably the most commonly well, you know what? used We really only chemical have two family. choices. You've got the pyrethroids, you got organophosphate like Lorsban. Okay, that's pretty much it. So you're pretty well stuck to use those things. Well, and here, here's, but, what I'm, here's what I'm getting at, Brian, is let's say you use pyrethroids over and over again. Yep. What bugs are they going to miss? Well, mainly it comes down to the mites. And in our part of the world, in the Western Corn Belt, we get spider mites that pop up. Well, hey, up. though, it depends on which pyrethroid you're talking about because capture has activity on mites and that's a pyrethroid. But then you look at silencer and declare, they're also pyrethroids. They don't have activity on mites. So just make sure you know what you're getting there. It just pays to do a little bit of rotation, just like with your crops. Typically you're rotating, maybe it's corn and beans, maybe you're throwing wheat in there as well. You know, if you, the more crops you get, 
uh, the less problems you seem to have with the same pests. Now with soybeans and insecticide spraying, you should rotate those families. Why not use Lorgeman? I don't think there's that much difference in length of control. Maybe it's a few days, maybe it's a week. You know, it isn't a huge well, difference. Honestly, I don't worry so much about which product you use. They're both going to work. Lorsban or any of the pyrethroids, they're fine. But the point is, make sure you're spraying, make sure you're spraying early, make sure you're actually scouting your fields and looking because aphids are tiny. And if you're scouting by driving 60 miles an hour down the road, you're not going to see them. Well, one other thing we invest money in every year is good weed control, especially when we have problems like our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed? 